25. Nick. I looked at the agenda that my secretary had just handed me and sighed when I saw that. She was barely going to have time to breathe. Between the opening of LRB and the closing of other two companies, I realized that I was almost not going to be able to do anything other than dedicate myself completely to work. I wasn't complaining, because I like to work. Especially in the new project that had cost me so much to start. I looked at that morning's newspaper and cursed under my breath. Simon Roger. He had called me that same morning to insist that we couldn't allow ourselves bad press so soon, the image we gave in those moments was the most important thing, according to him, and although I knew he was right I didn't. I had time to pose smiling in front of the cameras and explain the reason for my decisions. It had already been difficult for me to convince the board, I couldn't do it with everything. The world. Everything would get better, although in due time. The phone rang and I picked it up without thinking. It was Sophia. I'm busy, I said a little more sharply than I should have. You always are, she replied simply. Your secretary told me that. You travel to Los Angeles next week. I'm going to visit the LRB offices to make sure everything is going as planned. Wheels. Ella she also told me that you are going to have a party to celebrate the opening. I see that Lisa has you very well informed, I commented, annoyed. Yeah. Roger has insisted that a party would be the best way to give a good. Image. Were you thinking of telling me that you were coming to California? I remind you that. It's been more than a month since we've seen each other. I got up from my chair and went to pour myself a hot cup of coffee. The truth is. I had been so busy with work and remembering my last. I meet with Noah who, no, hadn't thought much about Sophia. Of course I was thinking of letting you know, I just didn't have anything closed yet, I replied. Calmly. I heard Sophia think even from so many miles away. See you at your apartment then? The illusion with which she spoke she did not. It went unnoticed and, despite the circumstances, it made me smile. See you there, I said, sitting down again. You have the key, right? I couldn't help but compare how he spoke to her and how he had spoken to her. Noah. He had given her the key months ago, because sometimes she needed to stay. In Los Angeles for work and my apartment was free. I don't. Had decided to sell it due to lack of time, in reality, the memories that. Kept those walls burned as much as the fire in the fireplace that had. Lit in the office. My flight to Los Angeles left very early and I would have just enough time to get to the staff meeting that he had called for that noon. Wanted to check that the same mistakes as last time were not being made. Also, I wanted to see my sister, since she hadn't returned to Los Angeles. Since New Year's, Noah hadn't shown up and a part of me had longed for him. See it with all my strength. Her mother had told me that she had decided stay on campus because she had to study, but I knew well that the cause. From her absence I bore my name. The last night we had spent together. Almost two months ago, it was still etched in my memory, every kiss, every word, every sound, every sensation. I don't know what would have happened if he hadn't left. Could I have left her later? Would I have been strong enough to stand next to her with her in my arms and tell her that we had finished? They were questions whose answers I did not have and would never have. Destiny had. I wanted her to make that decision, freeing me from having to do it and so. We had moved on with our lives. Now I had Sophia, although it was more of an obligation for me, a. Eh? Meet the expectations of my existence. I wanted to have children one day, I wanted. Have a woman I was never going to love anyone like I had loved Noah, but I didn't. I could put my life on hold, it would always be something painful to remember and it would always be. She would carry her in my soul, 
in the cells of my blood as if she belonged to me. Without. However, that did not mean that he could not make an effort for all that. That I knew I would want to have some day. Steve was waiting for me at the airport, who had come to spend a few days with. His eldest son, who was graduating from college the next day. I smiled at him. When I saw him and together we walked to the car. How is Aaron? I asked him while he put my belt on and... I turned on the mobile phone to see the missed calls and messages. Relieved to finally be done. I smiled distractedly and looked at the time on my wristwatch. You better speed up, I wouldn't want to be late for a meeting I have. Summoned myself. Steve did as I asked and it took us a little over half an hour to get into the city and stop next to the building that had cost me so many millions. I was not surprised by the commotion that seemed to be in the office when I they saw it coming, that had been something I had ended up getting used to. Good morning, Mr. Leister, we are waiting for you in the meeting room, he announced. A secretary whose name she didn't know. Thank you. Can you bring me a coffee in a minute? I asked him crossing the room. Aware that he was already quite late. Plain and without sugar, thank you. The secretary hurried to the coffee pot in an adjoining room and I crossed the hallway until I reached the meeting room. When I opened the door I surprised to hear that everyone was laughing, there was no one sitting in his seat of it, what's more, they were surrounding something that they found very funny. I approached surreptitiously, knowing that no one had heard me enter and I found a girl with long blonde hair who, sitting on a chair, was trying to win a beat Simon Roger himself. It took me, I think, two seconds too long to understand that the girl she was sitting there was Noah. I didn't understand anything, I stayed still watching her laugh and force herself against the hand of that idiot, who was obviously letting her win, at least for a while. My eyes rested for a few seconds too long on their clasped hands and I saw everything red. If in the ten minutes it took me to arrive you have time to assemble this. Circus, I don't even want to imagine what you'll do when I'm not there, I commented so loudly. That everyone, including the two who were looking amused and sitting in the middle. They stopped and turned to me. Noah jumped to his feet at the sound of my voice, and he shocked me so much again. Seeing it, and especially there, that rage took over each and every one of my senses, nothing mattered to me at that moment, not even the employees I had wanted to make a good impression, nor the fact that if he had not been Noah I would have laughed with them and even asked them to leave me. Participate. I looked at her and felt my whole world shake again. The meeting is cancelled, I almost shouted. Tomorrow I want you all here at seven in the morning and we'll see if you keep your job, this is not a fucking playground. I looked at everyone present, especially Roger, who was too close to my girlfriend, damn, too close to Noah. I turned to walk out the door, but not before giving out one last scream. Morgan, come to my office. 26. Noah. I stood staring at the door, immersed in a silence that also. They kept all of us gathered there. Fuck the boss. One exclaimed as he grabbed his things and left the room. Room. In the end what they say in the newspapers is going to be true, commented another, and. I turned to look at him. Many looked at me with pity, since I had been the only one he. He had called and screamed. Simon stood next to me and spoke in my ear. Do you want me to go with you? He offered himself, and everything that in the last. Weeks had made me feel stopped making sense. Nick was there. Calm down, it's okay, I know how to treat him, I answered and he looked at me with his. Frown. We had gone to dinner a few more nights since that first time. One day. During one of them, I ended up explaining what I had with Nick. Not even. Say has Simon's surprise when he realized that my relationship with 
he was far from being brotherly. I smiled at Simon and prepared to leave the room to go to the office that Nick, as boss, had in the building, although it was empty most of the time. When I got to the door I knocked before entering, especially because those who were around couldn't take their eyes off me. Enters. He bellowed from the other side of the door. As I did so, I found him nervously walking around the office. What the hell are you doing here? I took a deep breath and watched as he took off his jacket, tugging at it roughly. He stood on a chair and began to roll up his shirt sleeves up to his elbows. I work here, I replied with a frown. I thought you knew that. Nick stopped in the process of yanking off his tie and stabbed his. Look at mine in disbelief. What the hell are you talking about? I lost my job and remembered the card Lincoln Baxwell had given me. Given at Jenna's wedding, I called him and he told me that he would find me something. I. I shrugged my shoulders as I said it, as if it had been something too easy, like. That's how it had been in reality. Nick leaned against the desk and stared at me. Why didn't you call me? He asked and I noticed in his tone of voice a. Slight tinge of disappointment. I would have found you something much better. I rolled my eyes. You don't even know what my role is in the company. True, he agreed, approaching me. Who do you work for? Something told me that he wasn't going to find it funny, but he couldn't lie to her. It would take her less than a few minutes to figure out what he was doing there, and she didn't want to piss him off. Even more. I work for Simon. I'm sort of his assistant. Nicholas took a deep breath and took seconds to exhale. His assistant? He, he repeated in a mocking tone, raising his eyebrows. Significantly. And what the hell does that mean? I looked at him crossing my arms. What does it mean, Nicholas? Well, I help him with his agenda, I take him. Coffees. Coffee. He said, pronouncing the word as if it were an insult. Yes, you know, that brown stuff you drink in the morning. Don't be funny with me, he cut me off, sitting behind his table. And taking a look at me. Shouldn't you be studying? Are you still insisting? In working when you don't need it? The one who doesn't need it at all is you, Mr. Leister, I replied. Pronouncing his name with great emphasis. Nicholas looked at me like a school principal looking at a student who. She has behaved badly. You're very funny this morning. Does being silly during work hours make you? Puts you in a good mood. We shouldn't have played arm wrestling during work hours, but there was. It was he who had arrived late. It puts me in a good mood to see how jealous you are to see how well I did. Step with your employees. Roger, you mean. Employees, I insisted. And I'm not jealous, but pissed off seeing that you're wasting people's time. Who would have to be working hard to make this company work? So now it's my fault we've been killing time. While we were waiting for you to deign to show up at a meeting you had. Summoned you. Well, let's not start talking about guilt, Noah, you could give us the. Many. God, sometimes I forgot how unbearable he could be. Can I leave? I asked, glaring at him. No. His eyes shone into mine, with rage, with fury, with desire. You look good, he stated after a tense silence. The compliment got me. By surprise dash. Luckily you have already regained the kilos you had lost. I don't like you skeleton. I didn't expect that comment. Are you calling me fat? Nick laughed and that sound almost sent me into cardiac arrest. Do you look fat? No, of course she wasn't fat, she had never been fat, and it was true that the kilos that I had lost after our breakup I had been regaining little by little. Bit. Now she looked healthier to me, less worn out. That was a good sign. It meant I was moving forward. You're not bad either, I told him, avoiding answering his question. I guess being apart is starting to feel good to us. 
My tone was cold, even I realized that, and Nick stayed silent. Watching me and I suppose remembering, as I was doing, the last moments we had spent together. Do you want something else? I asked him, taking us both out of that bubble. Into which we seemed to have entered. I should keep working. Nick nodded without taking his eyes off me. What was he trying to tell me by looking at me that way? I turned my back on him and went to the door. Before leaving I turned back. You should relax more with your employees, Nicholas, they are good people. And everyone was looking forward to meeting you today. Nick leaned his head back a little, he seemed to think about how to answer me. But he finally just nodded. Then I walked away and left him alone, I guess. That with a lot to think about. The meeting the next day was much better. Nick was friendly and fun with everyone, but he didn't apologize for his behavior the day before. At last and after all, he was the boss and I suppose that finding the entire staff laughing and playing in the boardroom wouldn't have suited anyone running a company. Company. He seemed to put everyone in his pocket, everyone except Simon, who he observed with cold politeness. I didn't like that attitude, but I couldn't either. Do nothing. Nick treated me with the respect he deserved and had put a distance. Safe between the two, something I appreciated. From time to time he would meet me with his. Look at him, as if catching him off guard while he had been watching me. No. I could deny to myself that having him there pleased me and hurt me at the same time. But he tried to concentrate on work and he didn't have many. Occasions to talk to me, their meetings were private and almost never required. Of my presence, I was a simple in turn. However, everything got worse the day I left my office and found myself face to face with her, with Sophia. We both stare at each other. And, although inside I felt like I was dying, I tried with all my might to keep the calm. I'm glad to see you, I said in the happiest and calmest tone I could. Sophia looked at me in surprise and Nick, who was walking towards Simon's office and he had heard my words, he stood next to her and watched me cautiously, but without being able to hide a certain interest in her light blue eyes. If you'll excuse me. I turned on my heel and went straight to the bathroom, where I gave myself a minute to try with all my might not to start crying. Don't worry, Noah, you are already starting to get over it, remember? Breathe. Breathe. Don't give him the satisfaction of showing him that it affects you. The image of the two of them together, side by side, would always haunt me. Having seen them in a photo was not the same as seeing them in person, he blew me away. Seeing how Sophia's face lit up as soon as she felt him next to her, as she looked at me. How Nicholas's hand had rested lightly on the lower part of his. Back of her. Fuck no, don't cry now, don't do it don't be stupid. I stood up quickly and cooled my face with some water. Be careful not to let my eye makeup run. Next. I took out my lip gloss and gave them another layer of confidence, I had to look strong. As strong as the mature Noah she had proven herself to be a few years ago. Moment. When I came out of the bathroom Nick and Sophia were no longer where I had left them. I went to Simon's office, knocked and when he told me to come in, I I found myself face to face with Nick, who had approached to open the door for me. His eyes scrutinized my face carefully and I looked away, too. Then I went around him and approached my boss. I will give you all these numbers that you ask for, Nicholas, don't worry. Simon told him. He nodded distractedly. His eyes were still fixed on me. Why do you stand there looking at me, Nicholas? Go with your girlfriend, leave me. I suffer in peace. Nick seemed to hear my thoughts, because he nodded, walked off toward the door and he closed it when leaving. Simon looked away from him to me and approached me until he grabbed my hands. Hands of him. Are you okay? I nodded my head yes and approached him, who leaned on his desk. 
He pulled me closer. Simon and I had only kissed, we had not gone any further, and we had only done it twice. I knew I couldn't keep playing. Because we were fifteen years old, he was twenty-eight and he had made it more than clear to me. That she liked him, that she liked him too much. When he took my face in his hands and placed his lips on mine. I felt something, I felt a slight tingling, but nothing to do with the intoxication that. I felt alone with Nick looking into my eyes. Simon seemed to realize that he wasn't very into the task, he must have. Realized that he was distracted and not at all unreasonable, at that moment. Instantly I thought about everything but him. I wanted to ask you something, he announced, separating himself from me and going around the table. He opened a drawer and took out an ivory-colored white envelope. Within a couple of days is the company's opening party, everyone will go, and I would like you to accompany you. I opened my mouth slightly, almost on the verge of automatically refusing. Go with him as a couple. That would be like shouting from the rooftops that we had something. But wouldn't that be a good idea to keep Nicholas's feelings at bay? Stripe? He would surely go with Sophia, so what would be the problem? What do you say? Simon urged me hopefully. I'm going to have to go out and buy a dress, if my boss lets me. Clear. Simon smiled with real joy and I left before. Repent. He was putting me in the lion's den. The next night I went out for drinks with Jenna. It had been several weeks since. We didn't see each other and we had decided to spend a girl's night too. Let us lose our hair a little, me because I needed to feel like I was still nineteen. Years and Jenna because she needed to let out her old self, the Jenna who didn't. She was married and the one who didn't usually spend more than three days at home. So as the night deserved it, I put on a red leather miniskirt, some transparent stockings and a fitted, warm, dark-colored sweater, a gift from my mother, just like my knee-high-heeled boots. I made waves in my hair, which I let fall over my back, and I painted my lips the same color. Then the skirt. Jenna was going to be proud. After fighting for a while with the GPS I arrived at the pub where I had met. With her. My friend was waiting for me at the door and she welcomed me with a smile. Enormous. You looked very pretty today. Are we going hunting? She, she asked very. Moved. The fact that I have become pretty does not have to be related. With men, I dress for myself, besides, you are married. Jenna didn't seem to hear a single word I said. This is a pretty decent bar, it's not disco stuff, you know. Can. Talk, the lights are dim. What do you bet that in less than half an hour? Do we have guys drooling for our attention? I thought today was about having a few drinks, chatting and having fun. Us alone. I'm not interested in looking for a guy and, for you to stay. Don't worry, I have, something with my boss. Jenna's eyes widened. Discharge. She, she shouted, more excited than by the idea of going hunting for guys in. A bar. I shrugged it off. Invite me to the first drink and I'll tell you, but I warn you that there is no. A lot to tell. Jenna nodded even more excitedly and practically dragged me to. Inside the premises. It wasn't very big, but it was packed to the brim. Jenna asked. Two shots of something pink that she tasted very good and we sat at a little table. Secluded in the corner. Suddenly, the very heavy woman let go of me, come on, count. Are you fucking him? Are you fucking the boss? I didn't fuck him, we went out to dinner and well, we kissed. Twice, I clarified. Jenna stared at me. Twice. She, she repeated in a tone she already knew very well. Do not go. So fast, friend, lest I think you're a slut. Come on, shut up. I ordered him, throwing him one of the peanuts they had given us. 
served with the drink. Jenna laughed, but she continued to look at me like I was some kind of bug. Mutant from another galaxy. Seriously, Noah, I understand that sex is something special for you and everything. That, but fucking for the sake of fucking also has its advantages. I laughed at her while shaking my head in amusement. But Jenna didn't give. She gave up easily and she spent the next hour trying to find me a hookup. For that evening. When she was going to introduce me to the fifth guy of the night I looked at the clock and decided it was time to retire. I'm sorry, Jenna, but I have to go if I want to be with your eyes tomorrow. Open in the company. God forbid that Don Estirado calls me back to his shouting office. She laughed. I haven't asked you how you're doing, she commented curiously, but when? At the same time cautiously. The Nicholas issue had been discussed for some time. Became something that made us feel a little uncomfortable. No matter how many friends. Were we going, Jenna had known Nick since they were kids, and even though she. She had always been there for me, deep down she did not forgive me that she had. Broken heart like that. As long as we keep our distance, I think it's fine, I told him. Knowing that she was lying like a scoundrel, Nick's presence affected me. More than she was willing to admit. Just at that moment I saw Lion, tall and extremely handsome, entering through the bar door it didn't take long to locate us, as if we had a radar on the head of him. I greeted him with an amused smile and Jenna made room for him to sit. Sit next to her. How are you, Noah? Said my friend's husband, depositing the same. Time his big hand on her bare knee. Great, tired already, I responded, leaving my glass on the table and ready. To go home right away. Now that he knew that Jenna wasn't going to be left alone, it was the time to escape. I said goodbye to them and left the premises in the direction of where I had parked the car. Car. It was later than I had anticipated, but I was calm at the end. Having handed over to Lion, we all knew the stamina Jenna had and I didn't. I had the strength to keep up with him. I got into the car and took off towards the highway. Being Friday. At night the traffic was heavy, so I decided that instead of joining the the caravan that was a few meters away, it was preferable to opt for another route. Even if it took me longer. I turned on the radio to distract myself and after about ten minutes. Driving I felt a strange sensation in the car. Steering wheel direction. He started to resist, and I noticed that I was having trouble keeping him straight. Shit. I began to slow down, aware that I was in a secondary road, in the middle of nowhere, muddy and slippery from the drizzle that had not stopped falling for practically the entire day. I I stopped on the right side of the shoulder and turned on the emergency lights. I tried to remember what should be done in these cases and, when I got off, surrounded by almost absolute darkness and only interrupted by the car lights, I opened the trunk looking for a flashlight, the reflective vest and the safety triangle. Emergency. But, unfortunately for me, I didn't find them. I searched like a Possessed in the trunk that was full of nonsense, helping me with the flashlight. Of the cell phone, in vain. A car passed me at a speed that made me scream and gasp. Jump of almost a meter. You'll be a cretin. I screamed at nothing. I shone the flashlight on the wheels of my Audi until I saw that. Indeed, he had a puncture, he had a puncture and he didn't even have a spare wheel, no cat nor anything that could help me in this situation. Because? Because all that was in my old beetle. I cursed myself for being so stupid to have forgotten to change the car things. I took out my cell phone and called the only person I knew would come help me. As soon as I hit the green call button, the phone rang once.